Hello, my name is Jason Miller. I am a ServiceNow consultant with the Walt Disney Company. I assist Disney with the majority of their supplier SLAs on the ServiceNow platform. And today what I'd like to do is address a post on the community. Um, there's a question by, I believe it's Jiri Swami or Giri Swami. I, I apologize, I'm not sure how to pronounce um, the first name on, on this post. Um, but the, the question was basically why there are so many SLA definitions um, tagged to a record multiple times. Further down in the thread, I believe um, there was a comment that they had been canceled um, and then the, um, the SLAs continue to attach. Uh, one reason I suspect is because the, uh, the start conditions, excuse me, the cancel condition um, is set to start conditions are not met. So what I've done is I've set up a, uh, a couple of SLA definitions that have uh, different when to cancel um, features here. So we have two options, or excuse me, three options. We have start conditions are not met, cancel conditions are met, and then never. So never is pretty much self-explanatory. The SLA will continue to run infinitely until it hits the stop condition um, and then after that, it will, it will be marked completed. Um, and then we have here, start conditions are not met. So what this means is that in your start condition, all three of these must be true until we get to um, this, either the stop condition and it can even um, hit the pause condition in between in order for it to be marked paused. And when it hits the stop condition, it will be marked completed. So what happens most often is that if you have a start condition um, that has a, an assignment group is, let's just say IT finance cap one in this example here, um, and it switches um, to another assignment group, then it tells the SLA basically this one to cancel condition, go ahead and cancel. Um, and then if it's assigned back and all these conditions are met, um, then another one will fire. So I'll just show an example of how this works and then I'm going to show you how you can build um, a different type of construct for the SLA definition um, in order to um, make sure it doesn't cancel until the very end. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this one right now. So here are our start conditions. Assignment group is IT cab, uh, excuse me, IT finance cab one. Uh, active equals true and impact is to medium. Our pause condition is on hold or there's a host of other ones waiting for vendor, security ver verification, pending supplier. Uh, and then our stop condition is resolved. Um, also one thing I wanted to note is that if you're ever using uh, the condition type simple, um, you can only use when to cancel, start conditions are not met. You cannot use specific cancel conditions. Um, for that and that's just basically how the condition base uh, simple works. So we'll go over to uh, an incident. Uh, we'll go ahead and create it. So um, we'll go to IT finance cab one for our assignment group. We're going to make our impact to medium um, and then it'll automatically give it a, a state of new which active equals true is synonymous with that and we'll notice that our task SLA fires right here. So now if we change the impact to one, let's see what happens. We'll notice here, stage is canceled because we changed the impact. So that can be one reason right there. Now if we change this back to two and we have our assignment group IT, cab, uh, IT finance cab one, we hit save, there should be another one that fires. So now we'll see a second one fires, and we'll notice here our stage is in progress. We'll notice that we're, we're given a new start time on this too um, by about 35 seconds. If we wanted to maintain the same start timing and the created date, um, I noted in a, a past video um, how to use the retroactive start function. So I'll let you go ahead and um, reference that video instead of uh, going over that and wasting your time here. Okay, so let's say this gets... Um, reassigned to another group, we'll just say IVIP it gets assigned to, and it should also cancel it in this situation. Okay, so 
here we go. We have our second one that was marked canceled. And then if we go ahead and assign it back, it should fire another one. And we'll see another one fire here. So there should be three, two of which are canceled. Yep, so sure enough, here's our third one. We have a new incident start time, excuse me, a new SLA, task SLA start time. And now what we'll do is um, we'll just test out um, uh, the other uh, cancel conditions, uh, meaning active equals true. So in order to um, do that without uh, making it marked completed, um, what we can do is actually give it a status of canceled because that is active equals true, excuse me, active equals false. So just to always keep that in the back of your mind that active equals false, um, or excuse me, the state of canceled um, is active equals false. So right here we have state canceled. So now let's see what happens. And it should be more canceled. So all three, we've tested each one of those conditions in there. Um, all three of them um, tested correctly. Um, what we could do is if we wanted to test out um, the, let's see another one fire, let's say we put it back in progress, and let's say we want to test our pause conditions, we can do that too. So here we go, here's our fourth one that fires in progress, and now um, let's say we put it into on hold, click on save, and now it should be paused. Okay, and now we'll say, all right, let's go ahead and mark this thing complete or resolve it and see if that marks the task SLA complete. And sure enough, it's completed. So all the conditions that we put in here are tested correctly. Now the question is, because uh, this is on the incident table, uh, I can tell you from past experience, and I've been using the, the tool for about four years now, that um, the incident table is, is probably going to give you 90% of your headaches in terms of SLA construction, um, just because there's so many th different things happening, and you, and you can never really predict where that <clears throat> incident um, is going to go sometimes, because what the user experiences in terms of a service outage um, might not resemble anything as to what the actual um, uh, symptom is um, in terms of you know what, what actually is happening. They might just say, hey, my, my screen is frozen, but really a, a server is down. So it could be that what they're experiencing has nothing to, um, it, it's not exactly what um, uh, we, we thought it was in the beginning. So basically at the end, it'll be totally different. So without further ado, we'll look at our second SLA definition, which we've constructed here. And I just named it cancel conditions are met. And we'll watch, um, I'll mark it active now um, and, and just save it just to make sure we have it here. So now we'll see our start conditions fill in. And we'll notice a little bit different of a construct here in that we have our assignment group active equals true, impact equals two. So all that stuff is the same. Then let's take a look at our cancel conditions. Notice how I called these out. Impact is not medium or number two. Active is false. And then we have here assignment group is not ITCAB uh, one and the state is resolved. Um, so basically what this is saying is that if this is resolved by anyone other than IT cab fin finance, or excuse me, IT finance cab one, I want you to go ahead and cancel this thing. So basically what I'm telling this SLA to do is, all right, here's where I want you to start when this thing gets assigned to these guys and the impact is two. Um, then it can pause along the way if it's not assigned to this group. So if it just gets assigned away from this group, um, I want it to pause. And you'll notice the difference between this right here, a pause condition, and then our cancel condition down here with the assignment group is that I actually call out the state. I say, look, if these two things happen, um, I want it to, I don't want it to pause, I want it to actually cancel. So in essence, I'm telling this thing to wait till the end and then go ahead and make a decision. And look at our stop condition. State is resolved and the assignment group is IT finance cab one. Then what I want you to do is say, okay, fine. 
um, we can go ahead and mark this thing completed. And then it'll factor out um, all the pause conditions here. So basically any time that it wasn't spent with this assignment group, and then any time it's spent in these conditions here that we've defined. So let's just um, watch how the two different types of definitions um, interact with each other, um, or excuse me, alongside each other um, as we plug in the, these conditions here. So we're going to put in our IT finance cab one. We'll put in our sign. Actually, no, it's irrelevant what a sign to we put in there. And then we'll put an impact of two. And now both of them should fire at the same time. And we'll scroll down to our related list. And we'll see, sure enough, both of them have fired. And now what we want to do is we want to test out reassigning it to another group. Now one should be marked canceled and then the other one should be marked paused. Okay, great. Working as planned. It's paused right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it back. And now we'll save this. And now you, you'll notice the start condition's not met. Um, that fires off a second one. But while this one, um, it'll just keep attaching and running um, in the background and it'll factor out that 21 seconds it's spent in pause. So then if I want to go ahead and um, resolve this thing, I can go ahead and do that right now by mark. Well, we can also test out before we do that with the pause condition. And now let's take a look at both of them. Both of them should be paused. Yep, they're both paused now. And now we'll just go back to uh, we'll put it back in progress. Okay, now they're both in progress. Now you, you see the difference here in that the start time here is gonna is gonna vary um, a little bit here, and probably um, you know it just depends on the incident and how long it takes um, for it to resolve. But um, you're talking a, a probably a, a pretty large difference. Um, just depending on the way you construct these these SLAs, so that's one thing to be cognizant of. And also, you know, from an organizational perspective, you have to ask yourself: What are you actually tracking here? Do you want to track um, one team's performance against a certain um, incident? Um, is it natural behavior for this um, type of incident to be assigned back and forth between two teams? Um, if so, then you probably want to call out these cancel conditions. Are met and do them individually, and, and you know one thing I can't figure out is why ServiceNow just doesn't have you like reverse these start conditions um, down here into the cancel condition where you can actually just take you know break these out um, independently. And one thing I wanted to note also is that um, there's a big difference between hitting OR here and the OR clause. So these um, cancel conditions, these are OR clauses, which means they're independent of each other. So if I hit or, um, it's a separate set of conditions that come up. So uh, make sure you, you take note of that when you're creating these things. Um, and then, let's see here, we'll go back to our incident and we'll go ahead and resolve it now. And we'll take a look, we can take a look at the difference here. So. And we have our um, uh, business pause duration here is 38 seconds, whereas this one was 17 seconds. But uh, the stage for both of them is completed. Um, so it looks like um, you know the, this is a good result here. Everything is working as planned. So as I like to say, we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to, to uh, share them on my YouTube site. Uh, it's Agile ServiceNow solutions. Thank you and have a great day.